Okay, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, in addition to myself and Preston and John, we also have on the call Matt Curtis from Fort Fredericton, Pennsylvania, Mike Weaver from Fort Seabert, West Virginia, and Glenn Rhodes from Fort Republic, Virginia. They are three of our farm partners who are going to offer um, feedback on their um, experiences using these technologies towards the end of the webinar. Also, Dr. Mark Ryder helped us develop this webinar, but he is actually out of the country right now and not able to participate in person. So I want to talk a little bit about the drivers for the Farm Minorita Energy Initiative. Um, the whole Chesapeake Bay region is on a pollution diet, driven by the total maximum daily load. This project in particular is focusing on the high density animal production areas in our watershed. They're circled in red on that map. And they also overlap with areas of the watershed that have the highest phosphorus loading to the Chesapeake Bay. Um, and so there's a lot of interest around the region in identifying cost-effective alternatives to land application of excess poultry litter that's, um, oh, and manure. So that's uh, manure and litter that's um, produced in excess of what local crops or the farm crops can use as fertilizer. So I will not read this slide verbatim. Um, I, we did want to convey that this project has been a real partnership effort. We have collaborators from around the region, from different organizations. Um, our lead sponsor for the project is the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation. Um, and they have brought funding along with the Chesapeake Bay Funders Network, USDA Conservation Innovation Grant Program, and the US EPA Innovative Nutrient and Sediment Reduction Program. Also, we have reached out to a lot of experts um, to get their feedback and advice during this project. And we want to acknowledge them here and just, uh, you know, communicate that we have not done this by ourselves. This has um, been built on a lot of good advice by others and a great project team. So the project goal is to not just generate energy, but new sources of revenue for farmers with excess nutrients. And in the process, we want to reduce nutrient loss to the Chesapeake Bay. And we've done that by selecting technologies that can achieve that goal and demonstrating them on farms in the region and then evaluating their performance. And specifically, we have focused on technical, environmental, and financial performance. Um, we still have some data coming in, and we'll be producing a very comprehensive report on this project that will be available towards the end of the year. Um, we have a uh, a, a website that the Livestock Poultry and Environmental Learning Center folks helped us develop that will be a, that already has a lot of good information, and that's where we'll be posting our final report. Right now, we're going to be focusing primarily on um, technical environmental performance of these systems. So, just a little bit about our farm partners, three of whom are on the phone. Um, all of them are contract poultry growers that have a contract with an integrator to produce poultry. Um, they are all leaders in their field and outstanding stewards of both their farms and the land. All of them have excess poultry litter beyond what their farm can use, and they all have covered storage for that poultry litter. Um, they were also a good match for Minorita Energy Technologies and our project in general. We really relied on local conservation professionals to make introductions to um, to folks that might be willing to work with us. And we've asked a lot from our farm partners. So in addition to hosting a technology demonstration on our farm, they've worked with us to evaluate performance. Um, they've supported us bringing people on the farm to see these technologies. Um, and they've really gone above and beyond. They do have some differences. Um, one grows turkey. Most grow broiler chickens. Um, several produce broilers conventionally. One produces antibiotic free boilers, and several produce organic chicken. Um, and those differences in production, as well as the different relationships they have, or contracts they have with their integrators, affect the amount of propane used on the farm for heating, as well as the out-of-pocket cost to the grower for that propane. Um, and the different production strategies also impact the cost of feed. Feed is the most um, expensive component of growing a flock of chickens. Um, and it varies depending on the type of production, with organic being the highest. So selecting our technologies, uh, we did that through a request for proposal approach. And in addition to generating energy, which is an overall requirement, we were looking for vendors 
with technologies that could facilitate excess nutrient export. And that was really key. That's one of our most important ones. Um, but in addition, we were looking for technologies that were commercially available. Um, to support the project, we looked for vendors that had environmental performance data, like data on air emissions, that would facilitate getting on the project on the ground and permitting. Um, and we also were looking for vendors that were um, able to install a whole heating system, so not just the energy generation component, but the heat delivery or electricity delivery. Um, and we were looking for farmers that had experience working on a farm and that had experience using manure or poultry litter as a fuel. And a requirement was that the vendors had to bring resources to the project, and I'm referring to cost share. Um, we were absolutely open to use, working with an anaerobic digestion technology. As you all probably know, that's a great way to generate energy on a farm. We did not, at the time that we released our RFP, get any responses from vendors that could also meet the facilitating excess nutrients out of the watershed goal. So we ended up working with thermal energy technology providers. Um, and by thermal energy, we mean pyrolysis, combustion, and gasification. Um, and specifically, we worked with three combustion technologies and one gasification technology. 